Our next guest says gold could sink as low as 850 an ounce. <clears throat> we had this guy on yesterday. I just wish you would have been. I wish we could get him on the phone. With us now on set, Adam Grimes, CIO and Director of Tactical uh, Investments at Waverly Advisors. And uh, it was classic because I said, well, because he's back to $2,000 gold, he says, in near term. And I said, well, how long have you, you, know, you been long gold? to find out how long he's written it down. Right. And he said, since 300, I go, okay, so you ran it up. Have you been bullish all the way down? He goes, well, I bought it at 300. I go, yeah, but it would have been a good time at 1900 Ring to say something has right. changed. Would it not? Absolutely. What changed and, and why, is, why will it go even further low? Well, I think what we see is a few things have changed with gold. You know, gold is no longer the safe haven store value that we think of it traditionally. What is? Uh, the is dollar. The, I don't know. The dollar, uh, you know, cash is probably the safest place to be a lot of times. Uh, you know, gold is trading as a risk asset. Gold is trading much more like stocks, crude oil. It's trading very emotionally. Uh, you know, we can sit around and speculate on why maybe it's the rise of exchange-traded products and, you know, more of a retail mindset. Who knows? Maybe it's just a natural Why did it run evolution. up to 1900 uh, you know, I think the a lot of a lot of what has been driving price dynamics over the past three, four years in gold seems to be mostly psychological factors. And if you look at the way gold traded up around 1900, uh, you know, it was the kind of classic, like uh, climactic buying climax blow off thing. And we actually were able to initiate a short the day of the high, hmm. and that was just based on structures that we saw in the press. When the people that get very uh, nasty with me and, and, and tell me that I, that I don't understand what, what's going on are people that say that it, it has nothing to do, it's not a commodity, it is an actual currency, it is the actual only store of value in, the, in, a, in a fiat world, in yeah. a paper world, and that, that you're not really understanding economics if you don't understand Certainly right. that it isn't just, it, it's almost different than any other asset there is the point that they make. Well, that's the argument, but I think what is different in gold is the emotionality, is that a word, of the market participants, you know. I mean, how, how vehement are gold bugs about their position? Like, I've seen other people like that in, in certain stocks. that, that At certain get times, that, at right? Certain you know, times. The markets go through phases. Taze, the Tazarians. Right, uh, right. Uh, the, the Blackberrians right now. Right, are, right. Are some, and I I think, you know, I think what we see is that this makes a market, makes a, you know, wh whether gold is a shiny rock, a commodity, the ultimate store value, and you know what, it may be in 20 years, it may be in 50 years, we may be having a different discussion. It, is it, doesn't, it, it, oh, go ahead. it doesn't make you uncomfortable to be short something if it's all traded on a psychological basis anyway. I mean, that can turn against you at any point, too. Well, I mean, if, if there's not fundamentals that you're really basing right. any of this on. Right. Well, you know, I mean, the issue is, so, you know, we're talking about prices like 850 is the price target that we're thinking is out there. And it's not a case of, we manage actively, and if we saw something change in the dynamics, we could very well be long. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not like we're going to short and close our eyes and say, you know, we're right. We know it's going to 850 and pound the table. But is this a speculative don't. market? I mean, if, if it's a speculative market, people need to realize that. When they're getting market involved, is it? not a speculative Yeah, but uh, this one feels like it's just so no, I emotionally. I agree. And, and that, that is where I think, you know, it, when you see a market that makes you feel emotional, uh, you know, that's a time to step back and say, perhaps fundamentals are not. It's driving always this been like that with gold. But I, I wonder what people that got in um, a year ago, Einhorn people that are so What yeah. were they? Were they still thinking it was because of the printing presses globally? That, that was the, what Einhorn said at the time. Remember, he wrote that whole thing. Almighty! But but that I would have thought that what ran us up from 300 to 1900 was we knew that a lot of the the, the uh, private debt was going to be taken on uh, the financial crisis. It was going to be right. taken on by the by uh, you know public entities, and therefore you had to print to, to pay for all of that. So that would make sense. That but we didn't see what the worst case scenarios were 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 saying, and that would be a collapse of all currencies. We didn't see that. Right. You know, I mean, that argument would have made sense to me perhaps in 2008, 2009, right. 2010. And that's why it ran up, right? 2011, 2012. Is that why it ran up tonight? Uh, you know, certainly that was, that was a motivating factor, but I think the, you know, the real acceleration came in 2011 when a lot of those fears, at least in some quarters, had subsided. What, what about different cultures that just value gold and, ju and jewelry and there's not enough and they're not making any more of it? Do you 
have to think about that, that wedding season in India, something like that? Or? Well, you know, uh, you basically no. You, you don't see, uh, there was a time right. maybe in the 70s and 80s when you saw more cyclical fundamental drivers of price in gold and you could tease out some cyclical seasonal components and prices. You don't really see that so much anymore. You know, I mean, my argument goes back to this is a market that is almost completely divorced from fundamentals at right. this point. David, do you ever play in, in gold? Yes, I do. I think gold is currency. I think it's a long-term so store of value. Currency, yeah. I would say uh, Adam's comments are brilliant. I would say gold is like religion. You either believe in religion or you don't believe in religion. And that's uh, one of the things. Gold is, gold is down because of three things that are up. Interest rates are up, stocks are up, and the dollar's up, okay? Also, uh, gold basically rises. I taught for 27 years at Harvard and Yale, and the other professors said there's no formula for value in gold. Yes, there is. One divided by T where T is the trust you have in central bankers. And trust in central bankers has actually risen a little bit because, Joe, they say they're going to withdraw us from this uh, over over uh, hyped monetary stimulus. Finally, the inflation has basically is below their target, okay, so you don't have that going for you, and that perceived tail risk. Gold is like a Bugatti automobile and Andy Warhol painting. It is a store of value asset. It is not a capital asset whose price is driven by interest rate changes, nor a consumable or tradable asset like oil or grain whose, whose value is determined by supply and demand. Gold is purely a function of what someone else is willing to pay you for it, which ties into your Point. psychological. Right, right. You've written a wonderful book, Adam, Thank called you. The Art and Science of, of, of Technical Analysis. Am right. I right? Yes. Um, what is something if you could i wrote a book once i took it to my boss at, at morgan stanley it took me eight years to write the book he said i'm busy could you make a one-page summary of the book <laughs> i made a one-page summary of the book he comes in i'm on, he's on two phones he says could you give me a one sentence summary of this page wow. i then give him a one sentence summary he says point to the key word can you point to the key words in your book about technical analysis that we non-technicians need to know for the next commercial that we need to know voice? adam the, yes. what is what is the point we need to know about technical analysis of gold right now more often than not markets are driven by emotion markets are driven by the fear and the greed of market participants and if you can understand and stand apart from that crowd and approach markets as unemotionally objectively as possible then you have a chance of success